What's your best dumb criminal story? Story 1. When I worked at Guitar Center, a couple came into the store. The guy left and the girl stayed, checking out guitars. A sales guy saw her holding two higher-end Gibson Les Pauls down the low-end side of the wall by the BC Riches. He asked if he could help, and she asked a question about the guitars. He took one from her and went to check something on it. Once he was about 20 yards away, she bolted. She sprinted down the hallway to the warehouse, past the bathrooms, and busted out the emergency exit door that led out behind the store. Two guys took chase and made it out in time to see a car squealing around the corner of the building. We really had nothing to go on. I'm peed because having a $3,500 guitar stolen cuts into my bonus, and it just overall sucks to have your crew bummed about the theft, etc. Cut to one week later. I'm running my morning meeting, and I'm told I have an important phone call. I take the call, and my friend is telling me I have to check my email. I do, and there's a link from him to a Craigslist ad. The mother effer posted a photo of himself holding the guitar. I know it's ours. I just know it. He describes it inaccurately and is asking $1,000. Gives a BS reason for it not having a case. We need the serial number. We need that freaking number. Another manager calls him pretending to be a collector. He casually asks for the serial number, saying he's only looking for guitars from certain years. He calls it a date code, but I don't think the guy is buying it. He tells him he'll call back with the number, but never does. We're antsy. We call the cops. We form a plan. Another of our guys calls and tells this dude he just has to have this guitar. He'll come meet him with cash. Guy agrees. They meet at a gas station. Dude walks up with this gorgeous $3,500 Les Paul in a $35 gig bag. They BS for a bit, and my dude asks to see the guitar. He looks it over and checks the serial. It's ours. Yeah, man, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Great guitar. Then he waves across the street. Dude is like a deer in headlights. Cops arrest him and even let us leave with the guitar. Back at the store, my friend's phone rings. It's the guy's number. He answers. Girl, were you meeting my boyfriend about a guitar? Friend, yeah, I sure did. Girl, oh, he's not back yet. Are you still with him? Friend, nope, I'm already home. Girl, oh, weird. Okay, well, did you get the guitar? Friend, I sure did. I'm holding it right now. Thanks. Girl, oh, great. Thanks. Have a good day. One hour later, she called back. Didn't bother to answer. She left a very nasty voicemail with a lot of swearing. Priceless. I hear he threw her under the bus in court, and they both were in hot crap over the whole thing. Priceless. Love the justice. Don't get me wrong, I love a good, no-violence crime. Who doesn't? They make movies and TV shows about the stuff. But one thing I like even more is the people who were robbed getting their revenge. And dang, that was pretty darn sweet in this story. Story 2. A good example of thieves picking the wrong person, or persons, in this case, to rob. I was working as a manager at an ice rink at the time. One night during an adult league game, I heard a ruckus coming from the other side of my office wall. These are not thin walls, so I went to investigate. When I walked through the door that separates the lobby from the rink, the first thing I noticed was that neither team is on the ice. The score was 3-3 three three and the referees looked a little frightened. Since the game had recently started, this was very odd. At that moment, the door to the locker room 1 flew open so hard that one of the hinges broke. Out of the door flew the limp body of a 20-something-year-old man with baggy jeans and a long white and bloody shirt followed closely by his flat-brimmed hat and his two equally humbled buddies. This is what went down. At around the beginning of the second period, both teams noticed a group of three thugs slip in the back door and start looting the wallets and cell phones from the players' clothes. This was a common problem at the rink, and players are advised not to bring in valuables. Common a problem as it was, both teams were on high alert from being robbed in this way just a week prior. The captains had the game stopped and called a timeout. This is when things got ugly. Imagine the look on these crooks' faces when an army of 18 heavily padded and raged men with five-foot-long weapons came storming into the small room to find them with a pile of cell phones, wallets, and watches. The first guy had come by the time the cops arrived. The other two weren't knocked out and actually attempted to run. A quick crack on the shin with a hockey stick was all that was needed to keep them from leaving. The players all gathered around the thieves in an impenetrable circle until the cops came. I spoke to the player who admitted that he knocked the first guy out cold with a chop in the dome. 
He said that when his wallet was stolen the week before, it was with the only copy of his favorite picture of his daughter who died a year earlier. This guy was in his 30s, so the daughter couldn't have been very old. He had a feeling he would go to jail, but I decided not to pass this info to the cops once I saw the guy come too. The cops asked the players if they wanted them to go to jail. One guy chimed in and said, I think they've had enough. The rest of the players disagreed and said, no, they haven't. Frick them. Off they went. Too long, didn't read, don't steal from hockey players, especially not 18 of them. First, why would you try to steal from athletes? If they catch you, you have to face off with people more physically fit than you. And if you are going to rob athletes, why would you choose people from a sport known for its brutal fights? Yes, clever commenters, I know it's because they're in skates and the criminals would think they would be easier to run from. Just let me have my dang jokes. Story three. This story begins at around 3 a.m. outside my apartment complex. We lived in a corner sweet ground floor apartment. I heard a rustling and looked out my window. Guy was dragging around a box of donated clothing in the parking lot, occasionally stopping to throw out some ladies' clothing, which I assume it all was. Now, the next morning, girlfriend and I got up and went to work. I worked only a few blocks away, so I walked. I passed the same guy sleeping on the corner of the street. I walked by not thinking anything about it. Around 10 a.m., I got a call from the landlord saying my apartment got broken into. After I passed this guy and got out of sight, he got up and knocked on the neighbor's windows. She looked out and he told her that he forgot his keys and wanted to be let in. She said, no, frick off. Two minutes after that, she heard the guy knocking on our window. Apparently, since nobody answered, he busted the glass and let himself in. I guess she didn't hear this. After tearing our place apart and stuffing our valuables in a laundry basket, he walked up and down the hallway screaming. He was confronted by somebody and said he was looking for his girlfriend's apartment. After this encounter, the guy called a cab. You heard me, a cab. Neighbors saw the cab pull up and the guy get in with the laundry basket of crap, so she wrote down the cab number and called the cops. Cops called the cabbie and asked if the guy looked like he had stolen a bunch of stuff. Cabbie said, yes. Cops asked cabbie for where he was being dropped off and picked him up there. Best part? He pleaded not guilty and made me go to court. He left his shoes behind and took mine. I have size 14 feet. He has size 7. The thing that was the nail in the coffin, I am told, was that I mentioned to a cop after I collected everything that I was still missing my bacon-flavored toothpicks. The cops found them in his pants pocket. When taking my Xbox 360, rather than disconnect the network cable, he ripped it out, leaving the end in the 360. I don't know how hard he must have had to rip to rip a network cable in half. Girlfriend was missing some of her birth control pills. We never found them, assumed eaten. After everything, we only lost one sword and one beer. Get one awesome story, collateral damage, one beer and one sword. I think you're the winner. I'll never understand why some criminals insist on going to court when the case against them is so airtight. At that point, go for a plea or something, beg for mercy, but don't drag that crap out. You just stand to lose more. Story 4. The officer said he insisted he knew nothing about illegal dumping, no surprise, and when it seemed like the interrogation was going nowhere, he pulled out the receipt, and then the guy said, that's not my name. He already said it was him. The officer told me that's when he said, okay, sir, if you're not going to properly identify yourself, you're under arrest for obstructing a government official, a class A misdemeanor, and we'll find out who you really are. Suddenly, the guy's story changed. He was the guy in the receipt. That was his truck, and he dumped the trash in the park. The officer even said that the guy said, I never thought I'd get caught. And he wouldn't have either if it wasn't for us meddling kids. Too long didn't read. Guy dumps construction debris in park, leaves receipt with name, address, phone number. Make, model, color, mileage of vehicle, and VIN. Guy lies about it when questioned by police, comes clean after confronted with the receipt. Reminds me of Alice's Restaurant. Officer, I cannot tell a lie. I put that receipt on the bottom of the pile of trash. I swear to God, some of you need to learn how to TLDR. It shouldn't be half as long as the original danged story. Story 5. I'm a fraud prosecutor, so I'm really getting a kick out of these replies. I prosecuted a guy for eBay fraud. He had been selling car parts, spoilers, fenders, etc., and not delivering, which is fraudulent because he didn't have the parts and he'd spent the money. He entered a guilty plea where he would do some jail time and then he would be on probation. His terms prohibited him from doing anything on eBay while on probation. 
I later found out that while he was in jail, he bragged to some others about his exploits on eBay. They encouraged him to step it up beyond bodywork and go for whole cars where they'd be even more money. So, his first week on probation, he decides to answer a newspaper ad selling a car. He goes and takes a lot of pictures, but does not buy the car. He then takes the pictures and lists the car he doesn't own on eBay. The auction eventually closes for substantially less than the price listed in the newspaper. Of course, that doesn't matter, right? He calls the newspaper guy and asks for a test drive, taking the car to the lot where the eBay buyer is waiting. The guy wants payment up front and will be gone before the eBay buyer and newspaper seller figure out they've been had. Except that the car is a fairly uniquely modified Mercedes. It just happens to be owned by one of the top officials in the police department. Despite the fact that this all takes place in a large city, someone else in the department spotted the car while surfing eBay. He called the official, who was surprised to learn that the car he'd listed in the newspaper was for sale on eBay. The official had detectives bid on and win the auction in a hastily arranged undercover sting. So when our hero took his test drive and arrived at the lot where the eBay buyer was waiting with a check, he walked straight into a set of handcuffs. With all of his emails and evidence and calls recorded, he pleaded guilty and went to prison. Who knows what he'll dream up there. Why would you do a crime that has such a ridiculous paper trail back to you? I feel like that would be so easy to eventually catch on to. Ugh. Story 6. Usually it's not an accident that they choose to ship to your house. If billing says shipping are the same, all the site needs to do is pass the usual fraud checks and do automatic AVS on your address. Passes for billing, no need to scrutinize the shipping. The moment they pick an alternate shipping address, any competent store will give the order to a fraud analyst, and often merchant services of the card company are called to verify that it's an alternate shipping address they have on file. Then the thief calls the store and the courier and tries to get them to reroute in shipment pretending to be you, oh crap, I'm on vacation, etc. If that fails, they can try to trick the person in question to leave the package outside for them so they can pick it up from outside your house and drive away. If the thief lives locally, it's easy enough, especially if UPS drops packages while you're at work. They can go right up and take the package. This, that's what they tried to do with my CC. And that's the reason some carriers make sure you can't change your address once the shipment is on its way. Story 7. My dad is an ex-cop. He still knows and hangs out with most of the cops in town. After he retired, he bought a fairly large Ford pickup truck. Sorry, I don't know anything about truck models. And had a custom paint job done to it. Everybody knew this truck. Some idiot steals it. Bad enough he stole a truck with a custom paint job, which is going to stick out like a th sore thumb no matter where he goes. But the idiot decides to take it joyriding around town. Of course, once the cops get wind of this, they're all over it like flies on crap. Word spreads quickly. If anyone sees JJ's truck, it was stolen, nab the bastard. It's not like they had to look very far. There were eagles painted on the back window, each door, and the hood. It's not like the truck was going to blend in with the rest of traffic, especially considering the owner is well known. The guy might as well have had a neon sign saying, Please arrest me, floating over his head. He was busted the minute he drove by a cop, which didn't take very long. Folks, I'm starting to get the feeling that sometimes criminals aren't very smart. Like, I know this is a thread about dumb criminals, but man, I'm excited to see just how dumb we can get. Story 8. A friend of mine had his backpack with his $1,400 engineering laptop in it stolen while at the campus food court. I had a weird gut feeling it would turn up on Craigslist or somewhere similar. Every day for a week, I checked Craigslist. Exactly one week later, I found the laptop. This extremely stupid criminal took a picture of the laptop screen with my friend's login name. Yeah, very stupid criminal. So I contacted the seller immediately via email, and he responded within 20 minutes. I said I'd like to buy the laptop from him. We agreed to meet at a nearby parking lot later that day. Next, we called the cops. They agreed to set up a sting on the thief. One of the officers pretended to be a buyer and approached the thief. The officer acted as if he was examining the laptop but was actually looking for the serial number. Boom, it had a matching serial number and they arrested this dump site. A few weeks ago, four months later, the guy was proven guilty and, to my knowledge, is spending a year in prison. Plus, my buddy finally got his laptop back. Now I have a full-on justice boner. Story 9. 
This kid that was in my class in high school years back ran an operation on eBay selling those underbody neon light kits. You know, the bullcrap that makes you look all fast and furious. Anyway, he makes a small fortune selling this stuff. The only problem was that when the customer received their product, it was just a picture of a neon car kit. This kid had apparently worded his description to confuse people into thinking they were buying the real thing, but in reality they were spending $200 on a piece of paper. A bunch of peed off people from around the country called our local police and he ended up getting arrested. I can't remember the charge, but he had tens of thousands of dollars to pay back plus fines. The entire town shamed him, made fun of him for crying when the police interviewed him and everything. He was all over the news for a while. Reminds me of all those Xbox 360 boxes being sold, which were only the boxes. This is why I feel like eBay doesn't seem as prevalent these days. It used to be like the biggest of deals, but now it's just synonymous with scams. Scams as far as the eyes can see. Story 10. I used to live in a student rent, me, a friend, and a third guy whom neither of us knew. My friend and I went to Newcastle for a weekend on a visit, and when we returned, both my Xbox 360 and his PlayStation 3 were missing. We quizzed Guy 3 about it, and he claimed that he'd gone out one night and the door was open when he came back. He said he hadn't contacted us as his phone was broken. That turned out to be a total lie. Naturally, we contacted the police, and the officer who came around inspected the door and mentioned that there was no sign of forced entry anywhere in the house. A couple of days later, he left his door open whilst he went out. Neither of us totally believing his story, we decided to poke our heads round the door to see if there was anything untoward. And what do we find? Yep, both consoles plugged into his TV. We left the room and didn't mention to him when he came back. Instead, my friend went outside and contacted the police to inform them that we'd found the perpetrator. About an hour later, he was being let out of the door in handcuffs. Two hours later, his entire room was emptied, we work dang fast when we want to, and in a pile of black sacks in the hallway. His father came by the next day to collect the stuff and verbally abuse us for grassing, and we never heard from him again. To this day, we still laugh about the sheer audacity of stealing from someone you live with and keeping the stolen items, roughly 20 feet away. Today I learned that grassing is a UK term meaning to inform the police about someone's unlawful actions. Grass or grasser is another name for informer. To grass up on someone is to inform on them. Story 11. I've got one from this past weekend, actually. I volunteer cleaning up at a local park. It's called a park, but it has no facilities, no employees, etc. It's really more of a forest, and it doesn't get much official attention. Anyway, almost every day I walk through, pick up trash, and ensure it's properly disposed of. It's a beautiful park, and I like to keep it that way. So, Sunday afternoon, I found that someone had dumped a huge amount of construction debris in the park along one of the access roads. As I piled it up neatly, I found a receipt with a guy's name, address, and phone number, along with a description of his vehicle, including the make, model, mileage, and VIN. So, I called the state park police and asked to speak with an officer, showed him the dumped trash, showed him the receipt I found, and made a formal complaint. He gave me the usual, we'll let you know if we need anything else from you. The officer called me last night to thank me for finding the receipt. He said they went and paid the guy a visit, found that vehicle in the driveway, and he answered the door, are you John Doe? He said, yes, that's me. I know sometimes crime can be fun and exciting. As I said, they make shows about it. But don't mess up nature, dang it. We get enough of that crap from big corporations without you dumping your garbage in a park, you dong. Story 12. Girl steals my sister's Blackberry at a bar. Three weeks later, a friend who has my sister on BBM asks why her name is different. The girl didn't wipe the phone and changed her BBM name to her full name complete with a picture of her and her squeezy boyfriend. I then went on Facebook, found this girl by her name, her display picture on Facebook was the same one she used on BBM, add her, she accepts. On her Facebook is her cell phone and home number and statuses claiming new Blackberry, add my pin, which was my sister's pin. We called her up, told her the options she had, and we had the phone by the end of the day. As we walked away, I looked at her and said, not to sound preachy, but you should probably be careful who you accept on Facebook. She blank stares at me as I sit in the car. I think that's the moment she realized I was the guy whose friend request she accepted. Joke's on you, though. After all that work, all you got was a crappy Blackberry. 
please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 13. The first time my dad was on jury service, the case involved a criminal who tried to rob a jeweler's shop. This was probably in the UK in the early 50s when police response was slower and the shops weren't as well protected as they are now. The shop had a burglar alarm, but the thief figured he could just smash the front window, grab anything he could reach, and be long gone before the police showed up. Unfortunately, he didn't do his research properly. The shop was actually on the ground floor of an apartment block that was used to provide accommodations for young police officers. About a minute after the alarm went off, he found himself surrounded by 20 cops, and about 15 minutes after that, he was in a cell. Too long didn't read, clueless burglar knocks over a shop next to a police apartment, jail time ensues. Folks, haven't you played enough Payday 2? You gotta take the time to case the joint, figure out your escape plan, and be ready for an endless parade of police officers. Also, if you do the uh, Dragon Auction heist, I hear there's an NPC that sounds... a little familiar? Story 14. When I was 16 years old, some former friends broke into my basement. Among a couple of other random things, they stole my radio, which was a giant boombox, and my bike. They also stole a couple of sports collectibles that belonged to my stepfather. My stepfather was not the type of person you wanted to pee off. While he was never a violent person, but he had no problems with resorting to violence if need be. His sons, though, had hair-trigger tempers. It didn't take much for them to want to beat the crap out of someone. I'm peed. My stepfather is about to lose his crap. He calls up his sons, who head over to the house. As they're about to pull in, they hear music. The kids who broke into my house were in the schoolyard three houses down from where I live, listening to my radio, and one is sitting on my bike. Beatings were issued. Story 15. My soccer team was playing a game at a local park. During the game, a sketchy-looking guy runs through the pitch we are playing on, holding several cell phones. We soon realize that said valuables belong to us and begin chasing him. He probably thought he had made a profit stealing cell phones worth hundreds until he looks back and sees 30 people chasing him down. When we caught him, we took our valuables back and proceeded to beat the crap out of him. The thing is, our changing rooms are roughly 200 yards from the field, so why run directly past the people you've just robbed when you could easily sneak away? Story 16. They didn't make a mistake sending it to your address at all. It was fully intended. Most people won't have noticed that it has been charged to their credit card. They would have simply left the parcel outside, and later the criminal would have picked it up. The criminal this way doesn't have to give an address out, which he could be linked to, nor does he have to show his face. The worst-case scenario is that someone finds out, such as yourself, and all that they have given away is a phone number. Story 17. I used to work at a Puma retail store in a mall. We used to get 60% discounts on almost everything in the store, as well as five jackets, shirts, pants, shoes, and accessories for free every couple months. This was mainly because they wanted us to advertise their clothes, and it served as a uniform as well. The only items we wouldn't get for free or discount was the super popular stuff because they pretty much sold themselves. One of our employees found some empty shoe boxes in the back while organizing the stockroom and brought it to our manager's attention. The next day, one of our seasonal employees walks into work wearing the missing shoes. When asked where he got the shoes, he said he bought them from the store and then he was asked who rang him up. Well, the manager checked the register records and sure enough, there were no transactions for the shoes. Manager ends up asking the seasonal employee if they can search his car and he lets them, dumb, and they find a bunch of other stolen merchandise from the store. Too long didn't read, employee steals from store and wears stolen merchandise into work. I believe the expression is, don't bite the hand that feeds you. Not because of some loyalty to your employer, but because that hand is right by your danged face, you idiot. Story 18. A friend of mine was mugged by some teenagers. He wore a fluffy jacket, so when the muggers frisked him, they didn't find his mobile phone, but got his cash. As they were leaving, he heard them say that they were taking a taxi to a specific store. So, as soon as they had left, it was easy for him to call the police, who made a broadcast to all taxi drivers. After that, it was easy for the police to arrest the mongers. The world needs more fluffy jackets. Story 19. I live in a third world country, and my parents got a phone call from someone who uh, first put a crying girl on the line and claimed they've kidnapped me. I was with them at that time, so they knew it was fake. The conversation went like this. Dad, that's weird. I don't have a daughter. Durbar's criminal. You don't? Oh, uh, so do you have a son? Dad, 
No, Dervar's criminal. Oh, how about a younger sister? My dad hung up at this point. Story 20. That happened to my mother. Someone somehow got a hold of her credit card number and proceeded to buy things. Not even things that were remotely close to what she likes. I think they bought an attachment to a muffler, a prepaid cell phone, and some CDs, all shipped to my mother. I don't think they were very good at crime. My friend's roommate also lifted my debit card to buy lunch and dinner on a couple occasions. He works in an entirely different part of the state than my friend. My friend confronted him about it. He said, uh, no, that wasn't me. My friend just asked him again, and he admitted it. Still waiting on getting paid back, though. I'd report that to the police, by the way. Story 21. My good friend Carl works at a gas station in the city. One day, a very brawn, a very stupid man, walks up to the counter and pulls out a 12-gauge shotgun, points it directly at my friend's face, and orders him to put all the cash from the register into his bag. If I was Carl, I would have just done what he said, but instead he stupidly grabs the barrel of the shotgun, tussles with the man a little bit, and ends up getting the gun from him. The man quickly runs out of the store, leaving his shotgun. Carl just decides that instead of calling the police, he's just going to keep the shotgun and put this all behind him. Later that day, the same man comes back asking if he can have his shotgun back. Carl was so amazed at the stupidity of this man for coming back that instead of just saying no, he now decides to get the police involved and tricks the man into staying while he calls the police. Man gets arrested, Carl is a hero. Can I please have my shotgun back? My mom bought it for me and it's my only gun. Without it, I can't do no more crime. Please, I promise not to try to rob you again. Pretty please with a cherry on top. Story 22. Thought I'd add to the theft thing as my first comment. My son bought an expensive bike, 900. Registered it at the store where he bought it and registered it with our local police department. Six months later, it was stolen and he reported it. As advised, he called the police twice a month to ask if they found it. About two months later, he saw two guys riding bikes and one of them was his. He stopped them, talked to them, found out that an officer, the kid's uncle, had given him the bike. He talked the kid out of it by showing him the registration card. Guess what? The police then charged my son with grand theft. It got all the way to court where the prosecutor said their hands were tied right up to the moment when the judge came in. Story 23. I left my iPod at a restaurant. Friendlies, to be exact. Gotta love Friendlies, man. I was 12 at the time. We were in Orlando, Florida, visiting Disney, SeaWorld, you know, the works. Anyway, so eating dinner, order some classic Friendlies ice cream, fast forward to the hotel room. Oh crap, I left my iPod. So my ever-loving father goes to the Friendlies and asks for the iPod. The manager insists there is no iPod. My father demands to check the area in which we were eating with no success. On the way back, the manager and the waiter we had were talking. My dad walks up and asks one more time if they found an iPod. Manager, no. Waiter, yes. Turns out the manager tried to keep slash steal it. Long story short, that butthole got fired after a nice report to Friendly Co. And the waiter was rewarded and I got my iPod back. Too long didn't read, Butthole Friendly's manager tried to steal a boy's iPod, foiled by waiter, then the manager got fired. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't know why I read those TLDRs sometimes. I mean, you're watching a video. Frankly, even in the original posts, they are pretty pointless because folks always put them on a post that is all of five sentences long. So, too long didn't read, TLDRs are pretty dumb. Story 24. In high school, a girl's Blackberry got stolen while she was at track practice. It was a huge scandal as the only people with access to her stuff were people on the track team. The person who stole her phone tried to set up his email on the phone, which sent an email to her saying, Are you sure you want to change your email to the guy's name at idiot.com? It ended up being a team captain who had given the speech to the team asking for the phone to be returned. Story 25. Amex is a little overzealous in their anti-fraud practices. I just purchased about $1,200 of parts for my new home computer rig from Newegg.com. I get a call about 30 minutes later from Amex asking if it was me. I said, yes, what kind of thief would send computer parts to the billing address? His response was, you would be surprised. Incredulous. I love those calls. It makes me feel pretty secure if something does happen to go wrong. The one time my card was shut down was when I was trying to buy groceries at the grocery store I had gone to every week for like a year. 
I had to sit on hold for 45 minutes before I got someone, and they said, yeah, I got flagged as suspicious activity, to which I almost yelled back, what is suspicious about me buying groceries from a local store that I've been shopping at for a year? They had no response, and I had melted ice cream. Story 26, I had my iPod Touch stolen. The dude didn't seem very clever when he started talking with his girlfriend on my Facebook. Figured who she was, talked with her, got her to talk with him, he lived far away apparently. Boom. Please, tell me you seduced her, then called the cops. Story 27, my roommate and I were involved in a hit-and-run car accident in our own driveway. It was the middle of the night, and I had just gotten home and just crawled into bed when I heard a car peeling out on the road. Then I heard him crash into something. I ran to my window only to watch the bastard drive away. I went outside and saw he had run into our cars and sandwiched them together. Luckily, his car was just a junker. The rusty wire holding his front license plate to his bumper broke off, leaving his license plate behind. Story 28. I had a break in my house. We left the back door with the key inside and we have a cat flap. Turns out they could reach the key and open the door. Pretty clever. Unfortunately, that was the only amount of intelligence they would show. They stole a multi-pack of Coca-Cola and that was it. I'm dead serious. They only stole Coke from my fridge. One of them left their wallet on my kitchen table, had all their ID and everything. It also happened to contain a 20-pound note, which I promptly took before calling the police. The two guys were caught, and I heard a few months ago they are serving six months in prison. I hope those Cokes were worth it. Dang Coke addicts. Honestly, I don't know that I would have even pressed charges. I know, I know, they still broke in and stuff, but six months for a couple sodas that they inadvertently paid for? I don't know, I guess I can't blame you, but still. Story 29. My old crazy roommate stole my credit card and used it to subscribe to Entertainment Weekly under a pseudonym. She also bought a tank of gas and something worth $4.32 at the grocery store and then put it back in my wallet. She then later accused me of stealing her credit card and purchasing a subscription of Cat Fancy. I plead the fifth. Story 30. Mine was stolen once. The person ordered about $75 worth of pizza and had it delivered to their house. I visited the pizza place and said I needed a receipt for the pizza so my company would pay me back. They gave me a receipt showing the address they delivered it to. Turned it into the police in town, and they were on the news two days later. Nice work, detective. Story 31. Someone stole my credit card info and bought a copy of their credit report with it. I looked up that move on Facebook, too, since the CC company somehow ended up sending me a full copy of his credit report during the investigation, and I was like, dude, poke him. Story 32. We left our garage open a few years ago at night by accident. Apparently, someone had been snooping around in there because everything was out of place in the morning, except for a solid gold bracelet laying on the ground outside the garage door. What did they steal? My freaking Razor scooter, man. Oh no, but however will you do sick tricks now? Sure, you have a gold bracelet, but is that really worth the lack of radness in your life? I think not. Story 33. I had this same thing happen about eight years ago. The idiots used my debit card info to purchase a digital camera and computer parts, about $800 total from Newegg, and then had them shipped to my address. Called up Wells Fargo as soon as I noticed the charge, and they handled it fairly quickly. Three days later, I refunded the purchase and returned the merchandise to Newegg as soon as it arrived. I consider myself pretty lucky that the miscreants used incredibly poor thievery technique. Story 34. One of my friend's co-workers worked at a petrol station. One night, when he wasn't working, he put on a mask and robbed it with his friend. He demanded the extra cigarettes which were located under the counter from the clerk. The clerk just replied there weren't any cigarettes there. He replied, yes there are, I know, because I work here. Story 35. I had a guy get trapped under my rental property trying to steal copper. In his haste, he cut through a pipe and a supporting beam. That part of the house collapsed on him. I showed up a day later to him screaming for help. Despite being caught red-handed with a hacksaw under my house, he still denied he was doing anything illegal. You don't understand. He's a secret home inspector. He had to test out the beams and copper in your house. He was doing you a favor. Story 36. Stupid girl found my debit card after I dropped it on campus, took it to Wilson's Leather, and bought her boyfriend a leather jacket. When my card didn't have enough on it to pay the whole cost of the jacket, she used her own debit card to finish paying it off, all on video.
Story 37. My parents were driving home and saw their second car coming the other way, turned around, followed it, and stole it back with their spare set of keys. And yes, obviously then reported the matter to the police. Story 38. A guy I know stole my bike once. Two weeks later, however, he forgot who he stole it from and bragged off to me and several other people about how he stole it. I stole it back. Story 39. Someone stole my wife's debit card and used it for online gambling websites in Europe and ended up winning. The winning automatically went right back into her account. Jackpot. I am genuinely really curious about the legalities of that, but frankly, you let that criminal keep the card. They sound lucky. Story 40. Family friend had their credit card stolen. The guy ordered a pizza with it, delivered, caught quickly. Also, an idiot friend in high school found a credit card and put it on his eBay account. Brought Jessica Simpson face wash or something stupid like that with it. Story 41. Cheap knockoff Nintendo DS styluses. Amazon didn't even want them back. They gave me a refund, I canceled my debit card, and I just threw the I had the exact same thing happen to me. Except instead of an iPad, my dumb identity thief brought a four-pack of crappy styluses away. I talked to the cops too, but they didn't seem to give a crap. Story 42. My house was burglarized when about five years ago. They took my PlayStation, but not the power converter. Also, when they took the sheets off my parents' bed, presumably looking for money under the mattress, they put the sheets on top of my mom's $1,200 photo equipment. Story 43. Some buddies of mine once broke into an ice cream truck and got busted just a few blocks away eating said ice cream. Well, obviously they can't go too far from the scene of the crime, otherwise their stolen goods would all be melted. It's a risky crime, but a delicious one. Story 44. Someone got a credit card in my name, made purchases, but paid the balance on time. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.